This casting's a speedo drive adapter uh, off an old Oakland car and uh, it has a, a part line that's a little offset down here which just makes the job a little bit tricky. Also it's very difficult to lift the pattern off this central lump of sand and usually I lose a bit of that doing it. But we'll see how we go. A um, little bit of part on it first. This is quite tight in the box, this job. Quite tight indeed. That's probably not too bad for a position about there, I would guess. Okie dokie. Fair amount of fine facing sand to try and cover it all over. It's a fairly high pattern of course. That means it's going to take a fair bit of this to cover it. I'm nearly there, I hope. Close enough. Lots of sieve backing sand of course. that little hollow in there a bit of a, a prod first up. It's a bit difficult to ram normally so give it a bit of a help doing that. The first ram on this job is very very difficult because the pattern is so close to the top of the box. You'll be very careful not to strike the pattern just sort of go around a bit vaguely and not with any great force. A little bit more in the middle maybe. Okay. Now that I'm a bit above the pattern, I can get into the ramming with a bit more gusto. I really should probably use a bigger box for this job, but these little ones are so quick to ram up that I like using them. Now, of course, we have to cut down to the parting line on that uh, protrusion out the side here. This is a bit of a guessing game to get it cut down the right amount. Usually with a job like this you get some breakaway of the mould in some of these areas and you inevitably have to do a bit of filing afterwards on the casting. Important that these edges here are rounded off, they don't want to be sharp. If they are, there's a great chance that this lump of sand um, will break off the top box. They always want to radius those out. Smooth it up with... Uh, some part on the brush. That looks like we might get away with it. Now this central lump of sand here, that tends to be a bit weak and can break off. So I reinforce it with a couple of flathead nails. There we go. Wrong way. Right 
that one. No, that's the wrong way. That's right. These boxes are very, very accurate. The pins are very tight, and whilst that uh, helps a lot in trying to uh, get a clean lift of a mould off a pattern, it does uh, sometimes cause problems. The boxes tend to lock a bit. One riser and a sprue. It's very tight here. We haven't got much room between any. <coughs> little facing sand backing sand and pull the riser, just twist and pull the sprue, never wobble it. A little bit apart down each, make them easier to clean layout. Cut my new semi-experimental still pouring basin. Smooth the bottom of it up. Find the, here it is, right in front of me. Radius the junction with the sprue here. Well, that's not too bad, I think it'll do. <coughs> I've put a few vents in this uh, job because my sand's very fine and there are some areas here that'll get pretty hot. <coughs> sand will get pretty hot and a lot of steam will come out of it, so we'll also might go right down with one or two into that central lip area. That should be right. Now let's see if we can get this box apart. Now, cut a gate here, or a runner rather, and gate, it's so short it's the same thing really, I suppose. Now to see if we can get the pattern out without doing too much damage to the mould. <coughs> uh, 
first let's get it loose here's where you need the nails in this central lump of sand uh, if you didn't have them there's a pretty good chance that this wrapping would break that lump of sand away from the mold and it may not stay there even if it comes a bit loose the nails will hold it lost one of the little screws oh, get another one Now to see if it's loose enough to come. It's loose. It's coming. And there we have it. Not too bad. Happy with that one. Quick trial close of the mould. That'll do us. That's another one. Baseboard. And over in front of the furnace to be poured. Whoops, did fall. this one.